In this week's web video fishing forecast for New England, we've got some breaking news regarding the editorial position here in New England. We got word of a really cool trout study in Massachusetts Swift River. Trout reports in Mass and Connecticut, as well as a reminder of the early opening of trout season in Rhode Finally, got some cod and even tog reports in Rhode Island as well. Some big striped bass on the move and much, much more. Check it out. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Hey there, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of The Fisherman Magazine with this week's web video fishing forecast. Um, again, everybody stick it out right to the end as I got some pretty big news to pass along to you once we get through all of the reports. But we're going to start off with the reports up in Massachusetts talking about trout, which you're going to see, as you have for the last couple of weeks, quite a bit of trout info going on. Of course, uh, it's spring, trout are biting, seasons are finally open everywhere. Heard from buddies Clayton and James. They hit a couple of trout stocked ponds over the weekend. Did pretty well overall, but kind of an interesting note that they passed along. When they hit a pond that had been stocked at least four days earlier, they did really well. When they hit a pond that had been stocked two days or less roughly, they almost blanked out. So I don't know if those fish were just still spooked a little bit or whatever is the case. And I know those spring stock trout obviously get a bad rap, but I gotta tell you, there's been more than enough cases where they've outsmarted me, so uh, it, it just happens. But um, another note that James said, he heard of some herring also starting to poke around in some of those North Shore herring runs. So uh, really good news for the striper addicts out there. You can uh, almost start to think about something other than the trout that we've got going on. Staying in Massachusetts a little bit more. Um, I was looking into the trout stocking updates this week. Went to check it out and got something I felt was a little more interesting than the trout stocking info itself. Uh, many of you are familiar with the Swift River, real famous trout river coming out of Quabbin up in Massachusetts. Well, Mass Wildlife has kicked off a, um, a study trying to evaluate the long-term survival rate of the hatchery raised and trout and, and stocked trout that they put out there. So what they're doing is they're going to be marking some of the fish that they put in, or actually all of the fish in the Swift River. They're going to put an elastomer tag, it's a dye injection underneath the skin, and they're also going to be doing a fin clipping. The adipose fin is going to be cut off. Um, what they're doing for 2021, all of the tags are going to go on the left side and each month is going to have its own unique coloring. So what they can do is after they do the initial tag, the initial deployment of all the fish, they can come back every month, do electro sampling and see when the fish that they catch, when they were stocked, they'll know exactly month by month when they were put out there, they'll know where they moved, they're going to have general data on that and the overall survival rate. You can get all of the details on this story right now at thefisherman.com and I've got links over to Mass Wildlife's website where they also show you all of the colors that designate each of the months. So really cool study going on up there on the Swift River. And we got one more stop in Massachusetts this week as a good buddy Dave Bocas has a video submission. Take it away, Dave. Thank you, Toby. Coming at you from the Jeep, taking the boat out today. It's Sunday, April 4th. Now that I found all the eggs in the backyard, I figured it'd be a good idea to enjoy the nice weather outside, trolling for trout, going to a very popular, dare I say, most popular lake in Massachusetts, in the Sturbridge area, South Pond, special trout water. It's special cause uh, all the brown trout gotta be put back less than 15 inches. I, I, me and my buddies, we put them all back less than 15 or greater. I'll be trolling, I'll be hoping for uh, rainbows for the smoker. Smoke them all. I, wife puts them in a food processor, a couple pulses. We turn it into smoked trout sandwich with a little mayo, kind of like a tuna fish. Fourth April, a great man once said, April showers bring spring striper. But before that, this is how we span the time in Massachusetts, trolling for stockies. Striper and Chad right around the corner, and this is how we kill time. Let's see what I can do. Well, Toby, here's the report. There is no report. Came up empty, fished my butt out for two hours. Water's muddy, the wind is 10 miles an hour. I don't like it. So uh, I had no luck myself. One bite over by uh, 
one of the coves in the dock over there. These guys pulling out right now had five fish at Big Elm and they decided to jump lakes. They're saying they regret it, wish they had stayed there, but um, I don't know, I got to see some wildlife, bunch of ducks, rescued a dog. Well, here's a, I don't know, here's the real report. Look at this, come to find out that it's under construction. So good thing I came in this way. So I don't know, a word to the wise, should you come from the main parking lot side? I said yesterday I didn't get any fish at South Pond, but I did get two good ones on Friday when I went out. Just a couple of rainbows and all I do is sit them in soy sauce for three days. Been doing this for years, there's a couple things you could do, but this is just the simplest way I do it. What I'll do is I'll set the temperature to 200, stick them in the smoker, Two to three hours plenty of recipes online that you can get and that's it it's simple there they go all right it's been two and a half hours the fish is done and this is what it looks like simple and when there's more i'll take that vacuum seal it Stays good in the fridge for a few months, but I'll eat this this week. I'll chill it overnight. Then what I'll do is throw a piece in the food processor, mix in your mayonnaise and your spices, kind of like a tuna fish, and it's the best sandwich I've ever had. I'd eat it every day if I could. Or you take a piece that's chilled, flake it apart, put it on a piece of rye toast with some cream cheese, and that's what spring trout Spring trout stocking is all about for me, Toby. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Dave. Always appreciate those video reports from you. I gotta say though, you made me a little nervous driving around in your truck while you were shooting the video. I wouldn't recommend that in the future, but it looked pretty good. And of course, we're always interested in taking those video submissions, reports, photos, whatever you've got. So be sure to hit us up if you've got some info to pass along to you. All right, moving on down into Rhode Island. I want to quickly remind you that trout season in the Ocean State opened up early this year, April 7th. That was Wednesday this week that it kicked off. Normally, it's the second Saturday of the year, but uh, that would be April 10th this go-round. But the state opened it up early in an attempt to limit, to a degree, the crowds that generally congregate on opening day, obviously in light of all the COVID concerns we've got. And of course, leading up to, to opening day, the state did some really special stocking. They did the usual, you know, rainbows, browns, brookies, etc. But they they also put those special rainbow, uh, golden rainbow trout, and a really cool thing, Sabago salmon were also stocked. So I got the details on all this over at thefisherman.com. You can give it a look, as well as the details on how you can get your 2021 golden trout pin, which is a really commemorative uh, pin that you can get for catching and proving the catch on one of those goldens. Um, but in Rhode Island, if trout aren't your thing, because I know not everybody's into the trout, I finally got word of some halfway decent cod catches going on. Heard from our buddies over at the Francis Fleet. Uh, now, as you know, if you've been following along all winter, they haven't been able to get out a whole lot this winter. Uh, in reality, this Sunday's trip was only the second time they sailed since January, but this go-round, they did well. We finally got some, some decent weather, some calm seas. They had some pretty good cod, up to 20 pounds, a bunch of blackfish in the four to five pound range. Of course, a bunch of choggies, which is basically just a little blackfish. It tastes just as good, so always worth keeping those. Um, Francis plans to sail every day except for Tuesdays and Thursdays right now. So uh, be sure to head on over to their website. Give a check if you want to head out with them. All of those trips on all of the party boats right now are by reservation only. And moving down into Connecticut. Um, granted, they had some blackfish, as I just noted, on the Francis Fleet. Blackfish season opened on April 1st everywhere here in southern New England. I heard of a lot of guys getting out in Connecticut this week, but unfortunately, I didn't hear of anyone catching anything. No one got back to me. No one got back to any of the shops that were selling the crabs with any great reports. Uh, one thing I will say, I heard uh, uh, not all the shops have crabs right now, but that's fine. You don't need crabs to catch blackfish in the spring. While they're probably the first thing I'm going to go to, you can also get them on sandworms. I've also caught uh, blackfish in the spring on, on mussels. I've caught them on clams. I've even got them on periwinkles in a, in a pinch. So if you really want to put that first tog in the cooler this year, get a little creative and I'm sure you'll do well. 
And uh, while the togging, again, hasn't really kicked into gear, trout fishing in Connecticut has been spectacular. Uh, trout, the state's doing a great job stocking every single day. Last week, as I showed you, I was out at a lake hitting some really big brook trout caught a couple more after I shot the video, told my son about it. He couldn't wait to get back out. So we went out that night. Of course, he struck out and ended up spending more time on the swing set. But come Sunday, he got a really cool uh, present from the Easter Bunny. He got his first brand new rod and reel of his own. So right after breakfast, we ran out and he got this really nice, really big brook trout. That's an action shot of sore as it was uh, ready to get back in the water and got a quick release after that photo was taken. So it was a pretty cool catch. Uh, again, state is stocking trout ponds, the trout management lakes, trout management streams, pretty much every single day they are covering the state with new fish. And then last up on the reports, didn't touch upon stripers at all this week. And while this report isn't of stripers caught in New England, it's by a New Englander. Justin Cooper, buddy of mine from up in Maine, subscriber of the magazine, said the stripers haven't really started to wake up in his area, so he took a ride south. Went down to Jersey, got in on some really good action. Had a handful of fish over the slot, probably 30 fish almost inside the slot. All of the, the success was on soft plastics. I've also been hearing success on big metal lips, uh, guys trolling deep dive in plastic swimmers, of course, smaller mojos have produced. Um, and while Justin didn't say exactly where in Dirty Jersey he was, I'd have to guess that he was down in the Raritan Bay. And of course, you can get more info on the Raritan Bay fishery right now by checking out Jim Hutchinson's New Jersey report, video report, excuse me, right now, both at fisherman.com and on YouTube as well. All right, that was a lot to go through this week, but as I kind of teased early on, um, we've got some pretty big news to pass along here in New England. Now, I joined the Fisherman Magazine family as an official contact back in January of 2012. Prior to that, I wrote a handful of articles, as well as my first ever published work in 2007. Um, over the years, I've obviously written a bunch of articles. And then in January of 2014, we began this little weekly video feature that you're watching today. And I was looking into it. I've recorded a video every single week since then for a total of 379 videos this week, which I don't know, that's not quite a YouTube record, obviously, but in my books, that's pretty good nonetheless. Well, it doesn't look like I'm going to get to number 380, but you're going to be in good hands. No worries. My time with the fisherman is going to come to an end. And I gotta pass the reins of New England on over to a friend of mine and someone who I'm sure you're all very familiar with. Mr. Dave Anderson. Hey everybody. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. You know, I've left, I've had this job 10 years ago and uh, I always felt like I kind of left too soon. I'm looking forward to picking up where I left off and um, I'm going to start, I'm going to take over. I'm going to start doing the report, these video reports next week. And um, from here on out, you're going to be looking at my ugly face instead of his. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to do great. Again, I've known Dave for many years through the magazine and prior, and I'm sure everyone out there loves his articles. So uh, I feel the magazine's in great hands, and now you get to see Dave every week going forward on the videos. So for the last time, again, number 379. Uh, if you plan to head out and fish this weekend, be sure to start off your trip by visiting thefisherman.com. It's Tigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Tigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.